Hello. <laughs> we are on the QEW coming back from the Niagara region. Again. Another ultra full day. Um, well. Yeah, interesting. Well, we left at seven something and it is now seven something. Oh, yeah. 7.30 we roll off the drive. Correct. And it's now 7.32 and we are... Nowhere near Toronto. No, hour, an hour, an hour at least. Yeah, actually though I will mention that the we usually come back a little bit earlier and traffic seems to be a bit better a little bit later. Seems to be, for, for, for the minute anyway. So. Well, according to our GPS, which is usually pretty accurate. So, can we start by saying, please, if you listen to this, would you click the subscribe button on whatever it is you're listening to us on. It will just help us move forward. Um, you could do a review if you want, but it's not necessary, and I know it's time consuming, but uh, the odd one helps. Five stars only, please. Because <laughs> we're awesome. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So we have some news following last week's episode. Oh yeah, we needed to report back that the platterful mushrooms that we newly discovered and identified and consumed did not kill us. We are still still standing and alive and well. A week later. Yeah. I'm going to call them the platypus mushroom, I've decided. Fair enough. It sounds cooler than platter. Almost dinner plate mushroom would be a good name because they are... The size of a... Dinner plate. Or of a dessert plate. I think we call them tea plates or side plates. Saucer. In England. No, that's something altogether different. That's for your cup. Oh, when you here stick we your go little again finger out while you're drinking tea. Debates about anyway. biscuits and tea biscuits Scone. and scones. Anyways. So where did we ride today? We rode um, just outside St. Catharines, near Niagara on the lake, and um, it was on another portion of the good old Bruce Trail. So we took the Bruce Trail to the east. Correct. Towards uh, Niagara. Towards the American border, towards Niagara Falls. Um, and we parked in Greenwood Conservation Area. And I'll put a link to the car park. In I thought it was Woodland. I think it was called Woodland Conservation was it? Area. Woodland Conservation. Not green anything. Then. No, the trail was green. It was blue, but... <laughs> There's oh. a bit. Um, Everything is green. <laughs> woodland conservation area, my mistake. There are a number of car parks, but I think we parked in the best one because right out of the corner of the car park, you're straight onto the Bruce Trail with all of its joy and welcoming tree roots and rock. Yeah, I can I just say that I asked, oh, are we in a GoPro today? No, it's going to be boring. <laughs> And when I realized we're on the Bruce Trail, how could it possibly be boring? It's never boring. It was not boring. No, it... Um, but you can explain why you thought it was going to be boring. I did some research and it said it was an all-purpose trail. Uh, not on trail forks, according to the local Niagara report or whatever it is. Conservation area Conservation people? Thing. Um, yeah, it said it was a multi-use trail, blah, blah, blah. It isn't a beginner trail, I would say. If you if you have a fairly decent mountain bike, like a hardtail, with reasonable tyres, you will be okay on it. But you probably need suspension just to stop your hands falling off from the vibration from the roots. Breaking your wrists. And there are some tricky sections that you either need to walk or literally session a couple of times and there's a couple of sets of steps that you can certainly ride down but I don't think you'd be able to ride up. Um, I don't see how you would have ridden up but what do I know? Um, the ones near that building you could have ridden up I think. Oh right right. Well all to say is that from that whole 
experience of me asking, you know, oh, like, is this going to be interesting and should we do some video today? And Jamie having done his research and, um, you know, the conclusion being, no, he set us up for just like a nice easy ride after we've had like a 10 hour day of mind boggling things. Um, this is all to say is that I suppose this is why we're doing what we're doing, right? Because that report or that review was not at all accurate for what we wrote. It was not at all boring and wide and green and gravelly. It was good old Brucey Bruce. Yeah, and I think there's a trail system two miles in from where we started, two and a half miles, a little trail system in the woods, which is in Trail Forks, and I was looking forward to riding, but actually that was kind of muddy and sloppy, and actually the best part of the ride today was the normal Bruce Trail, which, yeah. you know, it's a bit of a... And it, I don't know, not, it's not really an adventure, but it's a bit more of an exploring ride because if you do what we did today, you've got the Bruce Trail, which is quite hard and difficult. Um, you then have the Bruce Trail where it's not hard and difficult and actually it's quite nice, kind of wide, almost like bridal path type lanes. But Sorry, which trail was that? The Bruce Trail. Yeah. So when you drop down from the hill, suddenly it gets kind of quite wide and pleasant, and then it enters into a field, and then we're in the meadows, and then you find yourself on the road. So it was a bit of a varied It certainly was. Mix there was, match, wasn't it? There was definitely some, I would say, you described it well. I would have said that there was some kind of boring parts today. But it, again, though, if you have just more of a mindset that like for us today was supposed to be just easy leisurely and a little bit more exactly explore the area um that that would have fit the bill but I then i got my hopes up a little bit when it was like action out of the gates so for me that part felt a bit boring after all that i think the road <laughs> i quite like i mean i'm can't be pleased <laughs> obviously from england i like a road bit in between it cleans the mud off your tires and can give you a bit of time to just regroup um, so there's a road part and you pass a tree with loads of shoes on which we need to look up because we don't know what that was yeah, about yeah there was skates on it ski boots on it <laughs> any hiking boots oh. all the boots <laughs> all the shoes um, it was and then cool there was a weird tunnel underneath the railway tracks that was a bit creepy which had like water flowing through it and smelled a bit weird and then sludge then green a, sludge then a, then a bridge which you're allowed to take bikes on but they've tried to stop motorcycles so it's so difficult to get through it it's a bit of a kind of jigsaw puzzle yeah that goes over the highway eh yeah i was in the highway isn't it sorry another yeah, railway track and then um and then you're kind of in like an overgrown scrubby area and then you're next to farmer's fields on like a farm tracky thing and then there's a trail system there in the woods where some of the hills are so steep you even on an e-bike you struggle to get up it so it it definitely requires a bit of exploration and uh, kind of setting yourself up to be out for quite a while I think yeah it was definitely a mixed bag of nuts today just on the potential edibles for the Bruce Trail we figured out that in the last two years of visiting various parts of the Bruce Trail, our mushroom wild edible findings have been... A little bit lacking, or a yeah. lot lacking. Um, so, but so surprising. Like, I mean, the environment and the types of trees, and um, it looks like, like slopey hills, and it just looks like it would be so primo for the mother load and nothing. Sleepy hills and damp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still no sign of... You know. Nope, up high, down low, like, it's kind of got it all. And um, I think when we were further north a couple years ago, we definitely saw a lot more mushrooms, but we were much but, less experienced. And I wondered if that was the Lake Superior walk, not the Bruce Trail one. No, I think... 
I think also on the Bruce Trail one. Right, I yeah, can't we, remember. We did that weird hike, I do recall. Right. We definitely saw some, but we didn't really know what we were doing. I guess that sparks our interest like, a bit more, right? It was early days, for sure. I only knew of like two or three mushrooms at the time. Um, anyways, that was all to say that further north on the Bruce Trail, for sure we've seen mushrooms, but every bit that we've done, every section we've been on down further south, um, yeah, it's it's been quite surprising that we have literally found, like, none. This area does surprise me every time because if you look at this trail system or you look into these trails on the map, it doesn't look like anything, and anything on that Bruce Trail you know, at the very least is a bit of a challenge and Definitely. at the worst is you're getting off and walking, like... Yeah, I would completely agree. Um, oh, for me and the level that I'm at, some of it is just impossible. Um, but I quite enjoy... Some, so today was easier for Bruce Trail that we've experienced, I would say. Um, and, yeah, just a lot of roots and rocks... But I was, I, I was saying, just while, while we were having our picnic, I really appreciated and enjoyed our minds have been going a mile a minute today with some complex stuff. And, oh man, it was so nice to get on the bike for an hour, however long. And by the time we were having our picnic, I realized I have not thought for a second about everything that my mind was spinning with today. So, thank you, bush and bicycle. Clears your head, you're going to die if you don't look at what you're doing. It's pretty much that <laughs> That actually simple. was kind of what I was Or, or at the very least, you are going to hurt You have yourself. to focus. Today was, like, um, definitely nothing too difficult, but definitely requires full attention. Yeah, I'm... Uh, I have a canyon hardtail which I got to take a bit of wear off of my normal full suspension bike because I don't want to wear it out or don't want to take it out when it's muddy and wet and clean it all the time because it just takes a long time. Um, and I did think today that it wasn't the day to be riding a hardtail on those trails. It's I know you do, day. sweetheart, but um, I yeah. Do, I do what? ride a hard tail oh, on that trail. I don't know any different though. But so. I was a little bit Just don't worry about it. Feeling a little bit tired and I was like, oh I do miss the uh, some of the pop that I get off my other bike. But I am gonna do a review on the canyon because it is the super basic one and I don't know, it just kinda of proves you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of pounds or dollars or euros or any other currency to And what was that? Ride three on it? Yeah, I've started to get to grips with it. I mean, there's a few things, and I'll do a review, which I'll talk about a couple of things you can do to make a bike a bit more comfortable if it's a bit uncomfortable. But, you know, it, it, yeah, it's been all right, actually. I'm starting to get my head around it a bit. I'm pleased to hear it. It takes a while, though. Well, I guess especially when I can only imagine if you're used to what you're used to, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, I think that's true. I just don't know any different. Just keep me in the dark. It can be as simple as tyres as well. And nobody tells you that, you know, you, if you get the right set of tyres on a mountain bike, um, and you run the pressures at the right time, and you can go to tubeless, but even if you don't do tubeless, if you get good tyres, run them at the right tyre pressures, and if you have a suspension fork, or full suspension, but suspension fork, you set it at the right air pressure, you can get a much more fun experience and get a lot more out of it. And, but nobody tells you that. You know, certainly not bike shops in general. Right. Um, anyway, we digress. What was your favourite part of the ride today? Oh, Apart I Apart from the field of smelly flowers. Oh, yeah. There was a lovely smell. <laughs> and at one point, I was so tired and delusional, I just wondered if it was somebody's barbecue. <laughs> yeah, you did say, is it a barbecue? Uh, I think it the was... The forest <laughs> on fire! <laughs> um, no, my favorite part was, and in fact, believe it or not, not actually going down that super-duper long, um, rocky 
hill that made my arms itchy <laughs> from the vibration. In fact, going up it was probably my favorite part. Yeah, that was, it looked impossible or difficult, but actually as long as you spun, you put it in a reasonably easy gear and just picked your way up, it was all right. Wasn't it? You know? Yeah, because you really, I, I think it was good practice for me. Um, and I don't know, it was just sort of fun. Like once you kind of got going, you were like, "Ooh, I think I can, I think I might be able to do this." Yeah, it was deceptive because the closer to the top you got, the flatter it seemed to become, which was quite pleasant. Because normally the closer to the top you get, the steeper things get. It um, was quite long, and I don't know. I suppose it was satisfying. <laughs> and then as you kind of head back to the car park, the way you came, and you, it's an out, it's a bit of an out and back, but there's like a complex college. Uh, Thing, which again I'll put a link to there's a little bit of a section around there that you I don't know if you practice you could probably ride it but it's tight in one place and awkward in another it's like a weird like a kind of a U shape um, and I don't know I've got a little bit more cautious I didn't want to snap the mech off the bike so I kind of walked it through the narrow bit but you if you ride it you'll realize exactly where that is. Um, I do think it's worth just talking about the coding of the Bruce Trail, because a lot of this ride you can do without stopping to look at a map or trail forks. But you <laughs> do need to understand... How glorious is that? You do need to understand the Bruce labelling system, which is a white oblong square. Rectangle, as we call oh, them yeah, in Canada. I'm tired. <laughs> A white rectangle, not an oblong square, <laughs> which is a rectangle, I guess. That was excellent. Um, but one means straight on, and two means a turn, left or right, and Jessica's figured out the code, which I... Uh, I think if, I, and I mean, most people would know this, and knowing me, I've got it backwards, but there'll be um, two on top of each other, slightly staggered, so if the one on top is slightly staggered to the left, I think that that means that you go left. If the right. one on the top is slightly offset to the right, then I think it means you're to take a right or veer right. Um, there's a good chance I have that backwards, 50-50. No, I think it's accurate. Um, yeah, no, I think that's fine. But it, it does make such a change to be able to ride looking at waymarks, not stopping every two seconds to look at trail forks, because I do spend a lot of rides trying to figure out routes and where to go. And, you know, some of you people benefit from this. So <laughs> but, it, but there is a lot of uh, fiddling about to try and make sure you get the route right. Yeah, thank you, Jamie, darling. Jessica never, never does it. I try and help every now and again, but it's that's a, it's a lot of effort. Can be. Um, and I, I really do appreciate going somewhere new, like almost all the time. Um, I bless the people that just ride the same place over and over and over again. I mean, I suppose it has its perks as well of getting to know it, but I love the adventure factor of, I never know what's coming ahead. I never remember a trail. I never know where I'm going or where I am, and I quite like that. So thank you, Jamie, for leading the way. I mean, do you want to talk a bit about the benefit of riding the same place or not? Do you want to do that in another one? Up to you. I mean... Another one. I'm tired, Jamie. Call me a wee ambulance. It's, um... Well, just quickly, like, you have All to right, have a balance. Back. Because if you want to get the best out of riding, riding different places is interesting and keeps things new and, you know, challenges you a bit. But often to build skills is worth riding the same place a bit more often so yeah but, like practicing some certain but, things yeah and you yeah. start to learn you can push things because you know what's going to happen and what's coming next but the caveat of that is the thought of riding the same place every day or every week or three times a week just means you get really good at one 
area and one set of skills, and then you suddenly land somewhere, you know, you take a flight and go somewhere or drive a long way to ride a new place, and you're kind of starting from the beginning, really, so that's why we try and mix it up a little bit. Um, well, sounds like the good old moral of every darn story. Oh, maybe. Balance is the answer. Um, and also, I've realised a little bit, which I kind of knew, but, you know, sometimes riding a different bike or a different type of bike on the same trails can liven things up a bit as well. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's clever. Yeah, if you really know a set of trails and you've got no choice but to ride the same trails, then... Question. Maybe take your gravel bike down there. I was going to say, could I ride my BMX bike on any of these trails? Um... Is that a whole nother podcast? You could take them to the cement limestone hill place. Sure, sure, sure. But Actually, that would be a great one. That You could even cruise through some of the trails or not really too much on the rocks. Yeah, and the wheels are a bit small, so you're possibly going to be over the handlebars. And, and the Bruce Trail, those routes are the challenge. Like, even on my... Um, or even on a full suspension bike on those Bruce trails, you do have to kind of pop your wheel over things, otherwise you just stop dead, don't you? Because the roots like grab you like a pair of hands, you know? I actually was practicing that a little bit today. There was a few things I was practicing a bit today. We uh, have a lot of roots in England, so it's... But the bit that I find hard on the Bruce trail isn't the roots, is the fact that then there's like a scattering of big, massive boulders as well, like you kind of get a couple of routes where the trail's washed away and then a boulder and it literally is like the shape of a wheel and your wheel just gets stuck and unless you've got a bit of momentum you can't pop it back out again. And sometimes you get two or three and then you're like, well, oh, Brucey babes. just going to walk. So, um, the other thing I just wanted to say on the Bruce Trail was you get the white marks for the Bruce Trail and then blue marks for alternative trails and Good one. in that area we rode today there are two or three loops you can do which are way marked as blue um, which we didn't have time to do today but we will do at some point but yeah they loop back round to themselves and like a lot of places you're never that far away from where you started to be honest um, Particularly either side of the highway, you'll just end up looping back to the start if you just follow any of the trails or look on trail forms, you'll see that they all just loop back on themselves. So you, in theory, can't get terribly lost. That's good to know, quite actually. Yeah. Uh, anything else to add? Um, do you want to? rate that a difficulty level or I mean you you said that in your reading it was rated as a what green? In my reading it was rated as an easy trail I would say it is not something I would say it's not easy I would say if Honor. you've ridden if you've ridden the mountain bike ten times before and you've got a vague idea of what you're doing you'd probably be okay to give it a go if you're a complete beginner or you're taking a complete, complete beginner or a child or, or something or a child yeah. I think it's the first part is tough then it gets easier then it gets tough again then it gets easier yeah it's just be quite prepared to walk a few things which is a-okay would be we my do. advice um, yeah we do and it was a nice day today uh, 24 degrees-ish sunny Yep. It has rained this week, so some of the trail was a bit wet. It's a little bit overgrown in a few places. I actually, um, I thought it would be muddier considering how much rain we got this week. And yeah. it wasn't too bad, but definitely muddy in spots. No, it drained away well. Yep. Um, the car park was excellent. We sat under a tree in our chairs and had our salad after we'd been riding and tea. And it's going. Um, <laughs> Or a biscuit or whatever the hell they call it. That was a so-called scone. Um, so that was excellent. Mm -hmm. And I think Again, that... like even though there was a couple of cars there, there was nobody in the car park. It was... That was a great car park, I would say. 
yeah, that's kind of why I picked it when I looked at the pictures. Um, yeah, I I think it was great. There is another car park which I'll uh, which you can look when you look at the link for this one. There are picnic tables and stuff which you could go to, I guess, if you wanted, if you kind of wanted to hang out at a picnic table. But uh, yeah, it was excellent. Anything else to add? I don't think so. Um, just other than. I will say yet again, the Bruce Trail is, it's amazing. It is so beautiful. Yeah, it's that whole Niagara Peninsula thing is something to see, I think. It's quite spectacular, that strip of limestone rock that just comes out of nowhere. Okay, well, until next time. Get lost! <laughs>